Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over this world globe and my sister had given this to me and asked me to turn it into something and make a video. So that's what I'm doing. I've already taken it apart. Um, and the only way that I could get this off was to take it apart. So I just took a razor blade and cut along the equator, which was right where the two sides connected. So once I cut along that equator and got the paper cut, then I just took a knife and pried it apart. And then obviously it came off the stand. So, and then I was left with these two sides. And now I'm just taking uh, this um, trim that I got on clearance at Walmart and it's just like a, a jute uh, fringe and I'm just gluing that to the raw edge of this um, of this side of the globe and if you haven't guessed already this is going to be a lampshade so um, again I'm just gluing this uh, along the the, the um, raw edge and and then i already have a hole in the top uh because of how it was uh, put on the stand of the globe so uh, and there was a little washer uh, that uh, kind of held that together or was part of the the uh, mechanism that held it together and so i'm just taking that um, that little washer and i'll glue that to the little hole on the top of this um, of this half sphere, I guess, and and that will be where my lampshade will go onto the finial. So as it turns out, it was really easy to turn this into a lampshade. Uh, like I said, the hardest part was was getting the globe itself apart. But once you get that uh, that line cut around the equator, then it just uh, it was pretty simple to get apart. And now I have this lamp uh, that someone had uh, painted black and not maybe not finished it. Uh, so I'm just taking some caviar uh, chalk paint from Dixie Belle and I'm not sponsored but uh, that's just the color that I'm using here. And uh, just going over this entire lamp uh, with a coat of that just so that I get an even black coverage. I was back and forth on what color to paint this and I almost painted it uh, a green color uh, but I, I just liked how this black when I set, sat the, uh, the shade on top I just liked how the black um, contrasted the lines in the um, in the globe so that's why I decided on that but because I didn't want this to be really harsh uh, once I let this coat of paint dry then I go over this with a coat of uh, white wax and I'm just using Dixie Belle hot white wax um, and then I just kind of brush that on and it gets into all those little nooks and crannies and creases and then I just wipe that off and I felt like that um, added some dimension to this and and kept it from being such a harsh black so again this lamp was uh was very easy from start to finish it went pretty quickly and just this one extra step uh, i feel like really added a lot of character to this lamp because you can see into all those details really well and i thought about um I thought about changing up the color of this wax and maybe uh, using more of a creamy to tan color and um, I might would have even gone over it and added some to it but I got kind of low on time today and uh, didn't get to that step but I, I still think the white wax looked really good I just felt like um, with the uh, with the more tan or creamy colors in the globe uh, that if I had used a cream colored wax it it would have looked a little better and if you've ever um, if you've ever finished a piece of furniture in that has some detail on it in black 
and use this uh, white wax it, it makes it really really look good I think uh, so if you haven't tried that you should try it because this really works well on a black piece of furniture sometimes I think I tend to overuse white wax uh, because I just really love uh, how it changes paint and I think the shade uh, ended up looking really good on this lamp. So now I decided to add another item to this, uh, to this flip. And I had this little file box and uh, it was an older, older file box. And my first plan was to, um, was to paint it, but I didn't want to take away from this vintage look of this paint. So I decided instead to just add some decoupage to it. So since uh, we're kind of working with the with the globe theme or the map theme, then I decided to use this paper that I got. Um, I think I bought this at Walmart uh, a few years ago, and I think it was just a poster. I think you get it in the poster section if I'm not mistaken. So it's not an old map. It just kind of has the look that I like. And um, I'm just going to put it on two sides and the front. So I measured the length that I would need it and, uh, and cut it the height of this file box. And, uh, and then uh, I decided I wanted to uh, let a lot of this green show through. So I decided, and I'm sorry, I'm out of frame here. But I decided to uh, rip uh, a little bit of um, a little bit away from the top, and I do this uh, not uniform at all because I kind of wanted to give it kind of a flowy look on the top, and I wanted it to be ripped. I didn't want to cut that uh, because I'm going to go back through and antique those edges. Uh, but here I'm just uh, because this is a stiffer. Uh, paper and I'm just really working my hands over it to get all the bubbles out and uh, in ripping this that I didn't have to cut out for that um, for that uh, I guess hook on the top um, or latch uh, so I was just able to kind of rip around it and uh, I feel like that was a good way to avoid that and uh, and still keep it more of a natural look. So do this on uh, the front and both sides and then I'm just kind of taking a baby wipe and wiping away any excess Mod Podge. And it's okay that I'm putting this over the box closed because I'm just going to take, once this dries, I just take a razor blade and cut along uh, uh, where the lid meets the, the bottom and then it, it opens right up and then it kind of flows together. I could have done them separately, but then I, my pictures wouldn't have, my image wouldn't have, flown, wouldn't have flowed together well. And so here I'm just kind of taking my brush and working any remaining bubbles out. And sometimes I find that if you get a bubble that you can't seem to work out, I didn't have to do it on this one, uh, but but like I said, with this paper being really stiff, uh, if you do have that issue, sometimes you can take a little pen and just kind of uh, and just kind of poke a few little holes in the bubbled area, and then it'll let the air out and and make it lay down a lot easier. And then I decided at this point that I wanted a little something on that top. So I decided to uh, cut a strip the, the width of the top and add just a little torn piece to the back. And I feel like that just added just enough uh, to the top. And now I'm taking that razor blade and just cutting along that um, where the top meets and uh, so that I can open the box. And um, now I did do this a little bit early uh, because it, you really need to let it dry um, completely. And you know, mine was a little bit damp, but I, I made it work, but it does work a lot better cutting your decoupage paper once it's completely dry. 
And then once I figured out how to get this box open, then I just wiped the remaining uh, Mod Podge from, from the lid and around the top. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, where I tore that paper, I wanted to uh, add something to uh, that raw edge. And so I'm just taking some, uh, some black wax and uh, just kind of brushing it over uh, the edge, the raw edges of the torn. I started with brown here and decided that I, I didn't like the way it looked that I wanted it to be, to have more black in it, especially since some of the other accents in this, uh, in this yet are, have some black in it. I decided I wanted to, uh, to add black around the edges instead of the brown, and I was happier with how the black looked. And I even went around the, the corners and, and just kind of added a little bit more dimension and an antiqued this up a little bit more also. And if you get too much, and I didn't have that problem, but if you get too much, then just take some clear wax over the top and it wipes off a lot easier. But I even went back with another coat on some of mine just to add even more. So after I got um, the antiquing wax on this, then I decided I wanted to put a little stencil on it. So I just took a little French stencil uh, and, and put on the front of the lid and um, I don't even know what this French stencil says it's some French word but I just thought it fit well and looked good in the area and then I used some buttercream um, paint and stenciled those words on the front and once I got this stencil on uh, then uh, that's all that I do to this box so uh, there was a few steps to this one, but uh, nothing was hard at all. So, and you wouldn't have to use the maps. You could use any kind of decoupage paper that you wanted. I just, I'm using maps here simply because of the vignette that I'm doing. And I really like how this one turns out. And then uh, once I finish this, uh, this box, then uh, the last item that I'm going to be doing is... Um, I'm going to be using the other side of the globe and, um, and making another lampshade. But with this one, I'm going to use uh, make a hanging light out of it. So I'm just using this little light kit here. And I I'm, I'm had my husband drill a hole for it. I just kind of traced out around uh, that socket area. And then had my husband drill it with, um, with a drill bit. And, um, and then I just put that down in there and screw, uh, the little, uh, the little thing on the inside to hold it on. And this was a very, very simple flip. And again, I'm just using that jute, um, French again and, uh, covering up that raw edge. Now you could use anything you want here. I just kind of like the idea of the fringe. And since I, uh, I was adding the fringe, I didn't want it to be too, Really, so uh, I just decided on this jute fringe, and then this will be my last, and uh, and I really like how this one turned out. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.